Ultra Magnus is legendary among Autobots and Decepticons alike. The mere sight of his armored form charging into battle is more than enough to inspire his troops to victory, and his strength as a warrior is more than enough to break any Decepticon army. Welcome back to e Before i Video Reviews. Today I'll be reviewing Transformers Generations Fall of Cybertron Ultra Magnus. Now I'm a little late to the game in reviewing this figure, but I will say, and I live in the Atlanta area, just now found this figure at retail. Believe me, I frequent Targets, Walmarts, Toys R Us, looking for figures like this, but we never got it. We went from Wave 1 which was Optimus Prime and Jazz, then we got the Combaticons, I guess that would have been Wave 2, and then this wave right here just never happened. So I was very excited once I finally found him in my local Target. Now this is a repaint of the Fall of Cybertron Optimus Prime, a figure that over time, well, I've grown less fond of. It's not that the figure was terrible, it's just that, well, just about everywhere else you looked, well, there were much better Optimus Primes to be had. Now, good Ultra Magnus figures in retail haven't exactly been plentiful. However, the Transformers Prime Voyager class Ultra Magnus, really, while he did have some flaws, I was and still am very fond of. So, the question remains, now that we have Ultra Magnus in his deluxe form, is he worth going out of your way to pick up? Should you stick to the Voyager Transformers Prime Ultra Magnus in retail? Or should you hold out for what is this soon-to-be Beast Hunters Ultra Magnus Voyager class, which seems to be a repaint of Power Eyes or Optimus Prime? We'll explore all that here and more. Taking a quick look at the box. Well, there's not much to see that you haven't already seen. However, I do find it interesting that the sword and blaster combine. I'm more interested in the fact that they didn't come up with some goofy names for the sword and blaster. Keep it generic, folks. He has his Cybertronian fist mode, uh, there's his robot. Technical specs are pretty much what you would expect for an Ultra Magnus character. All jacked to the gills, speed's a little slow, skill's a little bit uh, lower than I would have thought. Everything else is right up there where it should be. The only other thing worth looking at on this box is the absolutely beautiful artwork on the cover. Now it's been a few months since I've played Fall of Cybertron. So I don't remember offhand if Ultra Magnus was in the game. However, that would be a fantastic in-game representation of the figure. Enough about the box. Let's go ahead and get him open and find out if he's worth your money. Or your parents' money, depending on how old you are. All right, here's Ultra Magnus transformed into his vehicle mode. And first impressions, I like the way this looks a lot. My only real problem with it is its size. It's so tiny. Now, of course, I, I knew that going into this review since I own the Optimus Prime figure of the same mold, but still, you forget how small these things are, especially when compared to some of the newer figures we've gotten in the Transformers Beast Hunters line. Taking a closer look, I love the way that this sword pegs onto the side of the vehicle. I mean, it just looks great. Now, the weapon on top, yeah, it's okay. I mean, it kind of balances things. Well, no, it doesn't. It's not balanced at all, but it looks good. I think that that looks nice. Details on the vehicle, you know, I, I chose to put these smokestacks down a bit because in robot mode they're up. In prime, you have them up, and then in robot mode you flip them down. And so I kind of like to do the opposite here to, to differentiate them. Paint detail, you've got Autobot symbols on each side of the front, look great. Some nice in-plastic molding, as you can see. The paint is a bit scarce, but it's not terrible. You've got red here and red in the windows. You've got a silver painted grill right there, some red stripes, nice touch in the front bumper area. On the side, you've got real nice painted wheels. So you've got silver inside here, looks real good. The red continues over into the back. I do like that the white plastic is contrasted with the silver paint right there, looks really good. You do have white in what become the knees, but that looks good there as well. Now the sword, I have just pegged in here on the side. You can put the sword anywhere you want. You can slice them up on top. I would not recommend that he ride outside in a lightning storm with the sword pointed up in the sky. You can take the gun out, and you can basically put the gun on the side or the front. 
You can flip this thing. I mean, there's just all kinds of things you can do with the weapons. Now, the weapons themselves, as the box stated, has a combined mode. The problem with combined mode is there's no instructions to teach you how to combine them, and it's not very intuitive. So I'll do a whole little separate portion of the video after we transform Ultra Magnus and how to turn these two weapons into one ginormous, just massive sword. The size that would go good with the Voyager figure, with this guy looks a little bit silly, but you know, it's, it's, maybe it's not as bad as I think it will be. Size comparisons on this guy. I mentioned he's small. Here he is next to Beast Hunter's Wheeljack. I mean, that's just silly. Next to Jet Viacon General, again, just dwarfs him. Here's a non-beast huntered up wheeljack, and still just dwarfs the guy. Normally I wouldn't have a problem with it, and I know that I'm showing you toys in different lines here, but the problem is, this is Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus should be big, and uh, this is a very small toy. If you're only going to display him on a Fall of Cybertron shelf, well then the vehicle mode might not look so bad, until you put him next to the Voyager class Soundwave and then you're back into Goofyville again. Again, size here my only complaint. Let's get him transformed. I'm going to go somewhat quickly on the transformation since I've already done this with the Optimus Prime figure on my channel. I'll post a link to that down below if you want to see a more detailed step-by-step -step transformation. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to unplug the legs, flip the whole thing up like that, separate the legs, Twist them around, do the same thing on the other side. You're going to take the feet, you're going to pull them down, just like that. These feet are on ball joints, and basically it's on a, a ball joint and then a separate joint right in here, and you just want to slide them up underneath. Do the same thing, rinse and repeat on the other side. Well, you're almost done. Kind of looks like shockwave in this shot. Keeping the good times rolling, you want to take this front section right here, separate, you want to lift these pieces straight up in the air like that. You want to get your hand in here and just kind of take this whole section of his arms, lift them straight up in the air, turn the guy around, take this back flap and snap it into the back, turn him back around again. You want to bring the arms down. You want to take this white part right here and just kind of move it so that it doesn't snap off. Bring the elbow joint down, spin it around, flip around the fists, and from this point, you're ready to stand him up, pose him up, and here we've got Ultra Magnus in his robot mode. Let me just say this. This looks fantastic. I mean, everything about the way that he's proportioned, the way that he looks, the head sculpt is fantastic, the colors look great. This is really the best use of this mold. If you only want one and you want to choose between this guy and Optimus Prime, this is the one you're after right here. Let's take a closer look at his details. The head sculpt on Ultra Magnus looks just beautiful. I mean, it really looks like Magnus. It's a great take on the character. It really has a lot of, a uh, bit of old school look to it, and uh, also brings him up a little bit to, uh, to a modern design. It just really looks great. The Autobot symbols carry over well onto his shoulders. Nice touch on the red inside of his abdomen area right there. You still have kind of this oddly proportioned, kind of wide chest area, but, you know, posed up, it doesn't really look bad. It's just from certain angles, it's odd. All the paint from vehicle mode carries over into this mode, so you still see the silver and the red, and, you know, the white contrast against the blue really does look nice. Again, I, I can't be more pleased with how the paint scheme turned up here. Articulation on Ultra Magnus is pretty good. His head is on a ball joint, so he can look up, down, all around. His arms are on a ball joint. You have a swivel right here. You've got a joint right here at the elbow. The fists do rotate. There is waist articulation. Very nice. you got a ball joint in the upper part of the leg. Then you have a swivel, a nice knee hinge, and the foot is on a ball joint, so you do get a lot of movement on the feet. There's a lot of great poses that you can do with this guy just because of just how well articulated he is. Now, let's get into these. The weapons do indeed combine, and when they are combined, they look great. Now, you can put this in Magnus. I, I guess I should show you that you can put this weapon inside of his hand like that. You can also flip it upside down and hold it like a blaster. You can peg it into the side of his arm. The sword you can put into his hand like a regular sword. You can also peg this up against his arm. 
So if you want to have this thing pegged into his back like that, well, you certainly can do that, and it looks pretty good that way. If you want to be real wacky, you can point it straight upward as well. Now let's get back into combining. What do we need to do? Well, the first thing you want to do is just pull this sword apart. The best way to do that is just hold on to it and kind of wiggle the pieces apart, and you'll have two just like that in your hands. The mayhem's not done yet. You want to come in here, and you want to pull out this piece right here. So basically what you're left with is three pieces of the sword plus the blaster. Now what you're going to want to do is you want to take the blaster and hold it just like this so that you've got the kind of bent part up and the straight part face down like that. Then you're going to take this piece that you had separated earlier and you're going to turn it. You see that slot in here? Okay, you want to turn that slot toward the weapon so the peg is facing you. And then you want to just slot these two together just like that. And if you do it correctly, they'll be nice and flush in one single piece. Now again, holding it just like this, you want to take this portion to where your little hook piece is pointing down, and you want to move this, and you'll notice that there are grooves right here, and kind of more grooves just in the opposite position right there, and these tab together real nicely. So you just want to put these together, you'll find the grooves in the right slot, and basically just snap it together, and it looks just like that. It's real solid, it's not wobbly or anything like that, and basically... You know, one way to look at it is take this red piece and kind of put it up against this bottom slot and up against this back piece and you'll get a nice firm connection there. You want to take the last piece of the sword, just like this, and look at this rounded barrel bit right there. Alright, you want that barrel to go right around this one section, like right up against the tip where there's a hole, like a, almost like a slot for it right there. So you want to get that lined up, and you're going to have to just pop it in place. So it, it'll seem loose until you find that groove and just give it a squeeze. You kind of hear it snap, and then, and then, you've got the ginormous weapon of doom. And I mean, I simply cannot stress enough how awesome that looks. Now, yes, it's ridiculous, it's huge, and arguably way too big for this figure, but this weapon is Fantastic! Now the nice thing about this weapon is that the handle is long enough to where if you wanted to get kind of like a double-handed pose going, you could do that quite easily by tabbing these two pieces in, in together. And he can really have his Thundercats moment here. But yeah, no matter how you slice it, so to speak, this weapon really is great. Now here's where size comparison gets a bit odd. You can see that Beast Hunter's smokescreen, taller, than Ultra Magnus. Two different lines, but these are both deluxe figures. You want me to play fair? Well, that's fine. Same line. The Insecticon, taller than Ultra Magnus. And don't even get me started on Soundwave. This is Ultra Magnus. Magnus should be like this. But oh no, he's a little tiny dude. There he is next to Fall of Cybertron Starscream. So again, these are the same line of toys still too small. No matter how you slice it, he's not going to fit in really well with a large collection on your shelf. And for those curious, this is how he scales next to Transformers Prime Voyager Ultra Magnus. In conclusion, I think this figure's really good. Vehicle mode looks great. The colors really pop. The white against the blue and the red. Robot mode also equally impressive. The only downside with this character is again his size. He's really, really small. If you want to display this guy next to the fall of Cybertron Optimus Prime, the two will probably look great together. If you're looking for scale and to put him on a shelf of just a bunch of figures, well, this one might come up, well, a bit short, so to speak. If you're looking for something closer to the Transformers Prime version of Ultra Magnus, well, then the Voyager class I still highly recommend. This guy, though, has more of a classic look classic look in his face, and really, if you just want to have another Ultra Magnus in your collection, you really can't go wrong with this guy right here. Highly recommended, just know that, well, what you're getting here is a very small deluxe figure, although a very good one. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the support. If you're watching this video anywhere other than YouTube, you can see all of my videos at youtube.com slash ebeforeinet. 
If you're a social media junkie, or just, you know, like to check Facebook every so often, I'm there as well. I'm at facebook.com slash e before I. If you want to tweet me, watch it there, you can do it at e underscore before underscore I. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you again real soon.